Um, our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. All right. Um, so t- first of all, tell me, whereabouts are you in, in the world? I'm in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, in okay. my apartment. That is where I'm based. Um, yeah, it's full on lockdown right now. Like, you cannot do anything or go anywhere basically oh really so you guys are still completely locked down yeah i wouldn't say still i would say like we were handling it pretty well because we got into lockdown really fast so the numbers were great and Uh it seemed like um you know we were handling it really well but then because everyone was so happy then um they just released everything and they wanted the economy to go back to normal because obviously the damage was insane so oh, sure. everything went back to normal and people were like out in the streets you know celebrating like crazy so that really increased the numbers in any you know per- parameter is that how mm. you say that so, yeah and that's it so we're we're back back to oh. square or whatever whatever the fuck that is right that's where we're at <laughs> yeah, we're we're in the same. Uh, we're in California, and, and so yeah. we're 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 both pretty much in the. <laughs> the yeah, what, still, huh? All of us, I guess. That's yeah. the one thing that's comfort comforting about this whole thing. Yeah. So, Tel Aviv, are you? Were you born and raised there? Well, not in Tel Aviv. Um, I was born and raised in the north part of Israel so Israel is like so Tel Aviv is like right in most more or less in the middle of Israel and I was born somewhere in the north um yeah so I moved here like many people do when I was around 18 this is like the big city okay you move when when you're an artist when you're an adult all of a sudden that's where you go (laughs) okay okay how did you get into music um I don't know. I don't think there's, um, I mean, I was very much into music since I was a very young girl and there has been a lot of music playing in my home. My parents love music, um, but no one is like doing it professionally in my family. But um, I was just really, I think, very naturally into it Mm -hmm. since a very early age. So I used to ask for piano lessons guitar lessons kind of you know wanted to get familiar with how how it's done and I just gradually evolved and I I keep evolving all the Mm -hmm. time changing so did you start out uh what was the you said piano lessons and guitar lessons like how old were you when you were were taking lessons I mean I started a very at a very early age when I, I think I was five I, I I did my first piano lessons but then none of it is very impressive because I you know I would start and then quit after I don't know a month or two I was never able to sit down and practice and then I would fall in love with a different instrument so that you know got me to guitar and then singing and percussion so I was just kind of yeah going going around and doing that over and over again. So I came back to piano years later and then again. Um, But you know, it's like a very basic education in many different instruments, but nothing went um, as deep as, you know, my voice as an instrument, which is something that I think that I have uh, put a lot of work into Mm -hmm. and, you know, singing, you know, writing songs and composing and producing music when did you start yeah when did you start writing music was it fairly early on um yeah i think i mean properly sitting down in with the intention of writing a song that started pretty pretty late when i was 18 and i figured that that's probably something that i should try and do but i was always kind of singing melodies and when I was able to start recording, when I had like a small recording device, I started recording melodies and writing, you know, some little songs, nothing uh, too complete. But then, yeah, I think around the age of 18, when I moved to Tel Aviv and started um, meeting other musicians and people who really, you know, 
put the effort in it and had the discipline. So that's when everything started to change for me because up until that point, I was very much, uh, you know, just going back and forth. And um, I don't know, I think I got the discipline around that age and then it became a really extreme thing for me and started, you know, doing that and only that for a long, long time. So I had a lot of gap to complete, but mm -hmm. then, yeah. Do you know what, uh, was there like something that sparked your, you know, motivation to become an artist and move, move at 18 to pursue this dream? Yeah, I think, I think it was when I realized that, um, I think, I mean, around 18 is when people move out of their, out of their homes here. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we serve the army. It's something that you have to do. So, oh, really? um, I, yeah, you have to go to the army here and it's three years for boys and two years for girls. So it's a long Oh my time. gosh. Yeah. And, yeah. And when you're 18, so it's like in your, you know, your finest years, your youth, basically. So that is, that is what happens here when you're 18. So I think that many of the stories of people here, like doing a big breakthrough um, personally is, is when around the time that they're 18 and the whole world kind of goes upside down. And from being basically a child, you go into a phase of being a part of this massive system that you have to be a part of. And, you know, all that shit of being a soldier, you know, getting orders and doing that stuff but also i think you know there's it's a big it's a big big mind fuck this whole thing but the one um positive thing that came out of it for me and i think for many people here is that you have to really you're kind of forced to figure yourself out mm -hmm. <laughs> um gets you thinking a lot gives you a lot of time to reflect and those were, you know, the years that I did that. And my luck was that in the army, there's this weird thing in the army in Israel, there's this, the weird thing that is called um, military band. It's like a really old concept coming from around the 40s and 50s. I don't know if you have that picture in mind, you know, like yeah. a bunch of beautiful, um, beautiful looking soldiers singing songs and entertaining soldiers. Sure. So that is something that kind of still is happening here. And that was my, my job in the army. I used to, you know, drive from one place to the other and sing to soldiers, you know, right before or right after they were doing something that is hard for all of us to imagine. It's, it's, it's a really crazy thing to think about every time I, you know, give it a little bit of time to kind of think of that. It, mm -hmm. I, I, I realize how crazy it is. And, uh, but, but yeah, it obviously um, kind of accelerated my, you know, growing up and mm -hmm. becoming a person. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like at least you got one of the, one of the better gigs in, in the military. If, if you got to I got perform. The best. I got yeah. the best gigs, you know. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. And how did you get, how did, how do you go into the, well, first of all, I'm, I'm at 18, you turn 18, are you like in school? And then when you finish, like what would be like high school here, is that yeah. when you have to join or is it right. like, like, how does that work? Yeah. Like right when you finish high school, sometimes some people have some time before I, I had that because I finished school when I was 17. Um, mm -hmm. So I had like a, like a year off. I was like doing stuff, traveling, kind of preparing, you know, to get into the mode of two years of basically, you know, being a part and, and being owned by that system. And, mm -hmm. and, and but, but that is basically what happens. You finish school and you immediately go there and it's not like it just happens all of a sudden. The atmosphere, you know, it's something that exists here. It can't can't not exist it's a dis defense force um as well as you know some would say never mind <laughs> but you know <laughs> i'm not gonna go there today 
I was just curious, like, what if, like, what if you object? What, what do you, do you have to go to jail? Like, yeah. I know here in the, in the States, if you get drafted, you, yeah. and you object to it, like you have to serve prison. Yeah, yeah. Time. Is that yeah. what, is it similar there? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the deal. It's that or, or, or jail. Or, you know, many people find ways out, you know, um, you can, you know, come up with something medical that will, that will get you out of it or something mental. But um, there's always that issue with that, that it will be in your record. And then before you don't, you even know what you want to do with your life, you start to fear that it's going to be in your um, you know, when you apply for a job, right? Like they're, on your they're record. Gonna know. Yeah. So, wow. This hell. <laughs> yeah. Like, and here in the states, we haven't had a draft since Vietnam. But uh, it's funny. Like <laughs> my dad. God. Yeah, my dad was telling me his his buddy. Um, like they're coming. Like I guess you, they would pull numbers, and you kind of knew what number you were, and when it started getting close. So his his buddy was his number was coming close. So he just started eating like a just got oh. and, he, and he got fat. So like oh my god, yeah. So they so they passed on him when he got uh, drafted. That's amazing. Yeah, I know but, I know of some really crazy methods to, and that's the thing. You know, there are methods, but most of them are really crazy. You really have to, in in a way, hurt yourself or, or be really great at pretending that you're crazy. Mm-hmm. and yeah you know it's just gonna be there on your record and people will ask why didn't you go to the army it's like a very um normal thing to ask yeah and then you can't really say oh because i i'm crazy <laughs> yeah i acted uh, crazy yeah. That, that's yeah. how i got out <laughs> yeah yeah wow. yeah okay sorry to go off on a tangent there i was just very curious <laughs> so you how did you get into the band did you draw I, a uh, Oh, yeah. Like, you know, imagine, um, yeah, like one of those reality shows, but um, being auditioned by a bunch of um, former band, military band members who are, Uh many of them are celebrities now, you know, because it's like, it's a weird, it used to be the fast lane for fame here. It's it's not that, yeah, it's not that at all um, for a long time now, but some you know it that they collect the best of the best these are insane auditions and you have to show uh not just being able to sing and you have to show musicianship in a in a pretty good level as well so um yeah you get you get some really talented people over there to that surreal situation and many of them become very successful um Mm -hmm. in music so they audition you and yeah, between, you know, thousands of people are auditioning every year. So, uh, how many did they select for the band? What? How many people did they select for the band or you, you just go for, uh, like vocals and then there's only a handful of people and then they choose just one. No, there's, um, there's like, I think probably like five or six bands and some of them have one singer most of them are a group of singers and the the major thing about it is like vocal harmonies and that is why you have to be very uh, skilled when it comes to singing in harmonies and um, so you would have six singers all the singers are like really good really great singers Um, and um, yeah so the performance would be um, a song you know just the playback of the song being played Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> six soldiers on the stage singing in harmonies and sometimes even doing a little dance. Ooh. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. It's so weird. what, well, okay. So you, you do that for two years, you finish. Mm-hmm. What, what did you do next after, after you got out? Um, well, I was able, I, I moved I moved to Tel Aviv which got me closer to where I was serving so I would um at days like non show days I would um you know be at home and then meet musicians and I don't know create make music or jam or that stuff so I was like during that time I was really practicing many many different skills but then when I finished the army um many people just 
right after the army they go to do like a really big uh trip i don't know to india or south america mm -hmm. or um that stuff you know usually it's like between six months to a year um oh, everyone wow. does that but i was like doing my own trip and i was <laughs> literally you know working my ass off to to try to find confidence in that you know in my in my abilities because i really felt like i met a bunch of people who were so extremely talented and educated and um well trained and i was like i was just not and i really felt like i had to put myself in the same position as them so i i just worked all day on you know being a better singer and playing better piano and writing better songs and all of that and i got um familiar with producing music on the computer on a very basic level and then i just um applied to um to go to study in the music academy in jerusalem where i studied for two years for a degree that i never finished mm -hmm. and so that that is basically where i went later and it was very um the education that i got there was very classical i was studying composition so it was mostly writing for different classical um ensembles and stuff like that it was really really interesting but at, um at some point you know two years into the game i felt like what i really wanted to do was to write songs you know like pop songs mm -hmm. and and so i just yeah i just followed that and from that on that was yeah something that i really focused on um i had a full length album that i did um and i scrapped and then really yeah i have that somewhere i think in a hard drive somewhere probably not a full why'd you scrap the record yeah um well honestly i was at a time that i was um so educated <laughs> like right after right after uh, the academy and i was like so into that education you know how sometimes you meet people right out of college or right out of their you know their art school and you feel like they are so into what they were taught and they are not necessarily making art or they're they are so um technically trained that they kind of i don't know forgot the soul and the heart right. inside the craft so yeah. that was basically where i was i was very intellectual about everything i finally achieved the confidence in you know feeling like i am a proper musician because i knew how to read notes and that shit. right <laughs> so i was really eager to prove that and that is basically how the album sounds and i'm i'm really glad that i was able to to make that album and then listen back to it right when i finished and say i had to make that album just in order to get that out of my system and now i can just you know write music for for you know a good reason for to be able to connect with people and express something that is you know just far deeper than um me being trained or mm -hmm. smart do you do you remember the the first song that you wrote that wasn't you know uh, that was more of the more soul into it so to speak like do you do you remember the song that you wrote where you're like okay this is what I should be doing it shouldn't be the you know more technical aspect and and that like what I learned in school it doesn't need to be that Yeah I mean sometimes I wish I had one answer for those questions and I mean because it's cool to have that turning point song or right. to have the turning point moment but that it, that is just never the case with me it's always kind of a gradual thing so i can really see how after really you know deciding that and understanding that it took a while for me to you know leave that behind and i kind of feel like this album that i'm about to release is you know the first songs that i could say are you know basically just raw emotion and sometimes just nothing to do with 
my musicianship, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like so many years later, but it's just something that is so hard to, to leave behind, but it was a very slow and gradual process, which I, I think is, it's just, it's just great. I'm really grateful for the ability to, you know, step out of that slowly into what I really want to do and yeah, find new places. Sure. Yeah. Well, well, I want to hear. So, to- was "Toy" the very first song that you put out? Mm-mm. I want no toy. I I don't know. I don't remember. I think we had a bunch of um, singles before the first album. So, um, at some point, I met my current um, music partner and my partner in life, Ori Russo, who is uh, my partner in writing and and composing and producing the music. I mean, he's, he's 50% of the whole, maybe more than 50%, but I was just chosen to be the face or whatever. <laughs> okay. You know, he's, he's a behind the scene kind of guy. And sure. um, you, how, how did you meet him? Um, so I was like really eager to, uh, to learn how to use Ableton Live because I started, uh, that's the, you know, the software yeah. to create music for those, those of you who don't know. <laughs> um, many musicians work on that so- software and it's really intuitive and really great. Um, and I, it was really the first time that I felt like I was really actually able to, to have that be an extension of my, my brain instead of me struggling with uh, technology. And then I realized that I have this connection with the software. So I needed someone to take me, you know, an extra step. And I found an Ableton Live teacher somehow. And that was a we. So um, we did a couple of um, lessons. And then I realized that I'm um, in love with him. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, I mean, that's not an exaggeration. I mean, it took me twice to realize that um i'm just yeah and it took him a bit longer but then he he finally came around (laughs) he came around Uh, (laughs) sometimes you know the instincts you have to you know give give him a shake (laughs) sure Uh, but you know he he was never into working with me um because we were dating and at some point um Sunlux, do you know Sunlux? He's he's an American artist, uh, electronic producer, really, really, really great musician. And um, he he was touring um, his album, and he was coming to Tel Aviv. So as a part of the promotion of the show, they arranged a bunch of local artists to to cover him. And I and I needed someone to help me you know, to, to get something creative because I wanted to do something very um, complex. And so we just ended up doing that together and it felt so good and smooth and felt like um, we, we just have a re- like a similar taste. And when we don't, it's a very respectful conversation and it just felt really good. And then from that, it just became us working on songs together. And then, yeah, I just, got what I wanted was, which was, uh, you know, to have him as a partner in, in every aspect of life. Mm-hmm. And that is, yeah, up until today, that's the case. We're basically doing everything together. Well, okay. Well, what was the first song you guys put out together? Um, I had a song that I wrote um, from my previous, uh, from that, scrapped album that is mm-hmm. called uh, same things and it was um i mean a ballad that i used to play on the piano and i used to sing it very high like the one change that ori um helped me do was i used to sing in a very high pitch and then we took everything down and you know the interesting thing about that is that when you hear me talk my voice is very low. I mean, my, my speaking voice is, is lower than most um, females. <laughs> mm. 
And, you know, it's kind of going back to, to your natural position in so many different ways. And yeah, we just explored so many different things. And one of them was my voice and using that speaking voice that I already have so naturally. And so we took the scale down and produced the thing, um, you know, totally different. It was piano singing and then it became, you know, synth synthesizers and I was performing it um, like sort of like a one woman band type of thing. I used to play the drum and loop it and then play the bass and loop it and then play the z and loop it, you know? <laughs> right now I'm just like, it's so funny to me <laughs> because it's just the very same um, mechanism, you know, of trying to prove something as opposed to, you know, sometimes it just takes so much for a beat to be built when it's just one person trying to layer one thing over the other. So it will mm -hmm. sometimes take an intro to be, you know, sometimes the intro would be 20, 30 seconds and like, but what about the song and all that <laughs> stuff? So I just gradually, you know, in shows and everything, just gave up all the instruments gradually. Again, it was at the beginning, I was surrounded, I had this crazy station with all these, you know, instruments and microphones, and it was so stressful every single time. And, and then I just gave up the, the, the bass and then the drums and the synth and, and I, you know, got to the point that I'm just holding a microphone and going crazy with the crowd, which is such, you know, how can you compare that experience of, you know, sometimes, you know, in Back in the day when you were able to perform to people and then go go to the crowd and hug Back people. In the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is such a such an awesome thing to be able to do. So um so that was same things. And we had that thing going on for a while, you know, that one woman band thing and then yeah, I just wrote um some songs together and I think the the earlier one of the earliest was um, Off the Radar, which was, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Your EP. Um, yeah, the main single from the first, uh, from my first album. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, a, a great success later on. And, um, but I think that the first single that I ever released, like properly and with the proper video and with, with the label as well, was Dance While You Shoot, which, um, kind of changed everything mm -hmm. for me and for for Ori because um you know we were just yeah finding our sound and that kind of defined the sound like all over again and um took us to a very specific direction and I think that for many people when they want to um kind of touch on the sound or on my sound they you know they point out that song and it was also, you know, um, it was in the Apple Music ad when it was mm -hmm. just out, you know, the new service, Apple Music. That's so old. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy to have your song in that. Yeah, that it was campaign. Crazy. Yeah, and wow. the, ad had, the ad had, you know, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, you know, all these people, my heroes, you know, and Sia and all of them like in this crazy collage of celebrities and my song is playing. And at some point I, it was me in there. I mean, everything was just uh, very intense with that, with that part of my life. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of the turning point there for you. Right. Mm hmm Wow. And were you already, you, you said you already signed to City Slang at that point? Right. How did yeah. you get, how did you get signed to that label? So you remember Sun Lux from before? Yes. <laughs> um, so that, that is kind of like a really cool closure that happened because um, when he was touring and I did that cover and the cover just um, did really well and many, many people, you know, loved it and shared it and it got really massive and then he he got here and I got to meet him because of the success of the cover etc etc and then at some point I was reached by um uh, I got an email from a woman called called Krista and she said that she's from a label uh called City Sling and that they're about to sign Sun Lux 
and that that is how she ran by my things and she wanted to hear more so yeah it was just you know like an artist that I really really admired and um yeah because of him they found me and then they signed him after they signed me wow really yeah he was yeah it took a long time with him that's crazy Wow. Okay. So you signed the label, you put out your first, you put out the, the first record off the radar. Do yeah. you go on tour at this point? Yeah. I mean, we, um, even before it was out, we did a lot of those, you know, more like promotional tours. We did mm -hmm. many, um, showcases and that stuff. And it was, you know, South by and those, those type of things, you know, oh, wow. go to places and, just so that industry people see you mm -hmm. and it was really great because um like really hardcore situation to perform every single time mm -hmm. and then it just got us so um trained into you know dealing with the worst situations but also yeah it got our set up for the show to be so precise mm -hmm. And so easy to operate that um, when we got to our, you know, real tours, it was already like a really good um, oiled machine. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you got a lot of experience there early on with setup and getting the show going. Yeah, yeah, that Very was, good. that was, yeah, the good thing. Well, and tell me about, so you have a new record coming out and the... The videos that you have done so far are so insane. Like, thank you. Tell me yeah. about the like the crane that picks you up and is like, <laughs> like yeah. how, that's insane. Tell me about those those videos. It looks like a full on like movie production. Right. Yeah, yeah. The last one for uh, the song "You So Done." It's a, the last one I released. Um, what we did with it was. Um, we had a full version that is basically like a short movie, like a six minute piece that has mm -hmm. a long intro and then and then the music video, but I really, you know, was trying to find a way to um, make both, you know, just the video and also the full story work. So when you only see the music video, you basically see me being tossed around by a robot. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's basically the concept. and you have my my video for views which is the first single that i released back in february this year mm -hmm. and it's a you know me and a bunch of the other people climbing up the stairs <laughs> and the other one is just me in a really big fancy house living very ideal life and there's a bear like i my thing with videos with time became that I really wanted to be able to describe uh, a video in one line, you know, the video with the bear, the video with the robot, the video with the stairs, and for mm -hmm. it to be very clear to people what we're talking about. But also, like, you know, I found that many videos now, you know, you see when there's a very, when there's a lot of money in a video, you can see it. You see many of those. Um, but I think that, the videos that are simple and that you don't see the money um, but you see the creativity is these are the strong ones and the, the ones that you know stay with me and I just yeah I, I took I think thinking about the concepts and developing them but also being able to make a conversation about concepts for videos and how I want them to be to look and what I want them to present is, um, you know, it, it just took me so long to figure that out and have so many videos out there that are just, you know, you can just see the process mm -hmm. as it's going. But um, right now it's just, you know, a concept and like usually a one location, a one liner type of video. Um, that's, that's my thing now. How did you, how did you do the, the video with the um, the, the robot. robot. Would would you call that a robot? Yeah, um, it, it's supposed to be a robot. Um, so I was basically tied to ropes, and um, 
I was pulled and pushed by people and then we just deleted them, the ropes and the people and then yeah. added the robot. robot. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. And I would like to, you know, take this moment because all three videos were directed by the same dude. His name oh, is wow. Indy Height. Indy Height. He's the um, Israeli Ukrainian director. And that's like, wow. The, the the man is a genius because I mean he just has the craziest ideas and he's just able to make them all happen and have them all you know be very tasteful so he directed the video and wrote the concept for it but also did all the all the post production and the VFX and the editing like he's it's a, this is a one man show like wow proper yeah and it took him one month to do it he worked every day for 13 hours because the thing was he had that 3d uh how would you say that you know that machine that robot he had it mm -hmm. in like 3D, but he had to make sure that the motion of the robot is it works well with my with my motion and <laughs> that it kind of almost feel like choreography because that it was that is what it was, you know, it was all right. very rhythmic and choreographed. Yeah, it goes to the music book perfectly and like the way yeah. you're moving and everything and yeah. Yeah, Look. yeah, and he's a dancer as well. I mean, yeah, he's one of those guys and yeah, it took him, it, it took him a month, 13 hours every day and in the end he burnt his computer. So oh. you can just imagine the amount of you know work that it yeah took wow so that i can't believe that was done by one person because it does look like a high like you were talking about earlier the the massive budget music videos it, it looks like that just in like aesthetic like i don't know it just looks like it was shot for for like a feature film <laughs> yeah no it's it's just creativity and this was not a high budget video believe me um and yeah, you guys did a great really job of making it like that. Yeah, and really great team and people who are there for the right reasons. Yeah, very cool. So you have a record coming out this year? That's going to be next year, next unfortunately. Year. Yeah. yeah. So tell it's me ready. about the album. So you put out two songs so far. Three. No news for – no news on – oh, you have three songs. No news on TV, the new one you so done. Oh, Views. It was Views a new one, too? Yeah, Views Views was the first one. Okay. And, um, yeah, that was in February when we thought that we are going to release an album in September. Oh. And, I mean, yeah, just a bunch of things, you know, shifted in the world and in everywhere. But the, the, that was the thing. We were supposed to mix the album while traveling all over the world. We had really amazing tours scheduled and um but we sat the whole time in the studio and crafted the shit out of the sound of the album so i think <laughs> the album sounds great i mean for me i never reached you know such a yeah i i i really really love how the album sounds and i've worked so hard on it mm -hmm. And Oe and I, and like before with Off the Radar, it was just me and him in the room. And the whole thing just happened between us two, you know, writing and, and producing and all the process and mixing and every, all of it. And, and this time we were smart enough to say at some point, we have to let other people in the process because we <laughs> needed fresh ears. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had more time, so we just naturally worked and worked and worked hours and hours every day. And then we just really lost any objectivity. Is that a word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, objectivity. Yeah. <laughs> what? You know, the English is not my. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, but that is um, that's the correct word, objectivity. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we had a, a bunch of people, you know, come come into the studio when we already have the had the productions and 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 everything the songs were were there but 
was just a bunch of really great people who wanted to be a part of the process, who wanted to sit in the, at the beginning, it was like, just let me sit in the studio and see what you guys are doing. And then at some point it was just like, what do you think about that? And like, and they just got so involved in the process that it just became, you know, a group of people that were like, yeah, so, so generous to us and helped. So, you know, it, they just made the album far better than what it was, you know, supposed to be. If it was just me and Oli, more, mm -hmm. more brains, more people. And if yeah. these people are ego last and respectful and, and, you know, just doing it for the love of, of making music that could be so magical. And we were, yeah, we were so, so lucky to have, mm -hmm. to have uh, people come around. And I'm really excited about the album. It's just going to be something, yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, yeah. were, you, were, were you guys, did you have the album already recorded prior to, to coronavirus and all that happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had everything recorded and we had a deadline. So we were working towards it. Um, then it kept getting pushed and pushed. And um, so, yeah, you were we've... To, you were yeah, able we've, to sit down with it longer, like during quarantine and stuff when, and work on it? Yeah, and add stuff to it and, and, and mute many, many channels that we had enough time to realize that didn't mean anything or record new vocals like i've i think i recorded new vocals for probably three of the songs and that's just something that you i think many people just you know you don't do that like after you already have the, the song and it's sounding a certain way but i think it's just so good to give music time and that was mm. that was such a gift you know to have extra time we were ready we were already a year ago with the songs but then now it's like more than three years after wow. the first album and it's a good amount of time. I think, mm -hmm. I think an album cycle should be three years and not two. That's my opinion. <laughs> Give people time to right. perfect it. That's cool. So you feel like having those, that extra time definitely changed the record a bit? Absolutely. Very Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you guys on tour or anything during when coronavirus hit? Or no, were actually, um, we were just about home? to head. We were just about to head to um, to shoot a video in Mexico and then go straight to South by, which was oh. supposed to be the first show of a U.S. tour, oh. um, and that we were supposed to be touring festivals in Europe during the summer and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah then obviously the world came to a halt uh so you had a little bit more time to marinate on that record and uh did yeah. you shoot those videos and stuff during during quarantine yeah i am so the first one was pre um because the song was released in february um uh -huh. but then we we wrote the song no news on tv while quarantining it's a song basically about you know, it's a song inspired by that, but it's not about that. Um, so that was, you know, just after, as I told you before, there was the, the, the first wave here of, you know, that is how they describe it. The, the first wave of the pandemic that was happening mm -hmm. at the beginning. And then they were able to stop it like really quick and very uh, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so then after a few weeks of realizing that there are, hardly any new cases everything opened up all at once so but it was before they reopened uh, hotels um, so I was able to you know rent an entire hotel with for basically nothing wow. and <laughs> yeah, yeah there's you know comes with some yeah benefits so yeah we we did this during you know the comeback to life here and um and you so done was yeah more or less the same vibe so it was like two months here of people acting and feeling and thinking like this is all behind us um yeah it's weird 
Wow. Yeah. Obviously, that wasn't wasn't the case there, or I mean, or here in California, where no, we're all no back. Way. It's just not back the case. inside. Yep. yep. Unfortunately. Yeah. <sighs> well, <laughs> so do you have a what? Do you have another single coming out before the record? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the I'm, video and everything too? All of it. No, I actually have two. Um, that's how it is when you have a long campaign before a video. You just have more singles coming out and more videos. Um, yeah, we're just starting to kind of wrap our heads around what will be the concept for the next um, the next video. Mm -hmm. And we're talking to Indy because he's our man for any job now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I have no idea how we're going to do it this time because we can't go anywhere. Like it, you're not a lot allowed to go anywhere now here. So, and I don't know. I have no idea how to do that. I don't want, oh, I don't want. Oh, really? So they shut down everything. Everything. It's proper lockdown. It's illegal to go beyond uh one kilometer away from your house it's it's like that so how do you get food and you have to make sure there's a market close enough there's always a market close enough it's israel you know imagine a scale it's like it's a peanut it's it's so small but if you don't have if it's like 1.5 kilometer they'll they'll you know they'll, they'll, they'll let you, let you pass <laughs> yeah as long as oh you have my. as long as you wear a mask Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, stuff's every, every, stuff's kind of still open a little bit here. Uh, but they they yeah. recommend you stay obviously inside and wear a mask. Yeah, and, that's the difference, stuff. I guess, between recommending and kind of uh, forcing. Um, right. which I don't know. I don't even know what I think about any of the methods. I think sometimes, you know, it really takes um to say you're just not able to do that. I think some people are have been pretty irresponsible with things. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're still where we are at. Sure. So. I, yeah. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Noga, have you done any live stream stuff or interested in that? Yeah, um, we did. We did three, I think three or four. Um, mm -hmm. One of them was like full on acoustic, like that happened here right when it all started when everything was at lockdown and it was just um yeah just a really surreal documentation of the moment and at that time i was you know i have that video of me looking outside the window and explaining to people that this is such a crazy situation because usually the street and then i'm showing my street from my window usually the street is full with people and bars and everything and right now it's just dead silence it's like a ghost town and back then i was like oh my god this is like history right and I was like, i'm i'm able to see this thing and it's just so temporary and i felt you know there there was a really strong energy to it but i have to say that as much as it's kind of is kind of still unique I'm getting really tired of it and I'm, I'm, I'm getting frustrated about, you know, the fact that, yeah, it's just uh, never ending and that governments are failing to take care of it and failing to take care of the people inside of that situation. And I think it's like that all over the world. It kind of brings the problems um, above the surface and we, which is, I, I mean, maybe the good, the good thing about it is kind of like a wake up call for everyone to see you know listen you have to to see you know the government needs to take care of you and it's their job you're paying taxes or you serve the army you know it's fuck. like we're in trouble help and then it doesn't happen <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's a good thing to know it's good to know it's good that people see it and it's in front of our eyes but i really really hope that um that that soon enough this whole thing would come to an end because as much as I'm, I'm happy to view this on a historic level. I just, yeah, I'm so tired of it. Right. Honestly. I know. Is it hard to stay creative looking at your same four walls every day? No, I mean, it's not really like looking at the same four walls because um, our studio is inside the one kilometer. So we're able oh, to that's cool. space. We're able to go outside and, you know, 
to the sun, we have access to our um, building rooftops. So yeah, the end, um, you know, for me mainly this whole thing was just less emails, less notification, less you no know, destruction and more, you know, for me, this quiet is, is a really good creative um, atmosphere. So it wasn't an issue for me. Have you been writing? I mean, I know that you got to work on your on your record, but what about like new songs? Yeah, yeah, we've been we've been writing. Uh, we have been writing for other people, which is you know a new thing for us. Do you enjoy been, it? Writing other pe- for other people? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine writing for myself now. Like I'm I'm so over myself at this point. <laughs> My voice is just obnoxious to me. No. <laughs> I love it, you know, but right. I've been listening to it so much and I just want to, you know, not, yeah, not just be, I love, I love being, you know, able to not be so centered around my world, my creativity, my own, it just so refreshing to be able to try to express something that is not your own Mm -hmm. to connect to someone else's emotional world and get their thoughts and emotions and put them into into art it's very yeah it's just refreshing i guess yeah well Hopefully this all ends soon <laughs> and, and you will be back playing, playing shows and doing that tour here in the United States. Um, right. Yeah. And thank you so much, Nuga, for talking with me today. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really great. And yeah, and hopefully we'll get to uh, meet in person soon. Meet in real life. Elbow yeah. to elbow. <laughs> elbow to elbow. I do have I one think, more question. Qu- I sorry, think teasing is like is done, right? Oh so, yeah, the, oh, especially. Oh yeah, that's done, right? We're not it's, gonna kiss anymore. Like, no, it's gonna be like elbow. elbows forever. Elbow, elbows elbows forever. Are forever. All right. I, I do have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. I hate that question. No. Um, no, 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 that I, I wish I, I had, you know, um, I wish it was one thing. Um, I do think that, I do think that a lot of what I would advise, um, I think a lot of this thing is just uh, emotional and psychological and mental. I really think that as much as you put so much work into um, being a better musician, performer, writer, et cetera, et cetera. I think there should be a lot of work put into being able to uh, maintain your your mental wellness, your your psychological situation, like where you're at personally. I really do think that that is the most in, important investment, n- no matter what you're trying to do but i think that when it comes to being trying to be an artist and how competitive and crazy it can be and how much you kind of you know go inside your soul and into your most painful wounds and and you know tell people about them and you know try to make that um what 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 makes you it can be difficult and i think that the one thing that i can say is that investing in um your your mental state is just the most important thing whether it is you know therapy meditation whatever the fuck you know helps you maintain sanity sanity is the most important thing you know sanity and and um health i guess Bring me the bad word.